一百四十七 The Santa Fe New Mexican Playon The 四十三 R D Santa Fe Chamber Music Festival 二零一五年七月十七日 James M Calasos The Santa Fe New Mexican July 十七 The Santa Fe Chamber Music Festival moves into action on Sunday evening July 十九 When it launches its 四十三 R D season. The organization will again be operating within its comfort zone. It sums up main stage concerts, not counting youth concerts and for on outs to Albuquerque, are weighted toward very familiar pieces by very familiar composers, and the performing rust is chuffy with the names of musicians who appear annually with the festival and, in some cases, are probably already booked here for years to come. An advantage of such a strategy is that music lovers who attend the festival's concerts with any regularity will be in a pretty good position to handicap the authorings. If you liked the way the Orion String Quartet played Beethoven's Arp, Yapak Yisapta last time, you will probably like it again this time. If you could hardly wait to applaud at the end of the most recent performance played here by the Mir, Miami, or Johannes Quartets. You will probably be eager to do the same this summer. The most exciting self-standing for some in the whole lineup this season is the Dover Quartet, which was unusually fine in its festival debut performances last summer. The group will be back this season, but only to play a single piece, Schubert's Rassemann Quartet, as part of the final concert of the season. On Og, Yisab say. One entirely new ensemble will be at the festival this year. The Montrose Trio, which are for piano trios by Duerna, his second, Beethoven, his first, and Brahms, his first, at St. Francis Auditorium on Thursday, July 27. Although the group is just recently minted, it consists of three distinguished chamber music veterans who are well known in these parts. Violinist Martin Biver and cellist Clive Greensmith, who play together for more than a decade in the now disbanded Tokyo Quartet, along with pianist John Kimura Parker. Parker also takes the stage all alone this week on Tuesday, July 8 at St. Francis Auditorium for the first of the festival's popular noontime concerts. This Canadian pianist. Who teaches at the Shepherd School of Music of Houston's Rice University makes the rounds of notable orchestras and concert halls, but he always seems to have some unusual, gratifying project up his sleeve as well, which may add to the sense of personal and intellectual bonhomie he projects. He has toured out posts in the frozen Arctic, performed in Warton Sarajevo. And kept Canadian music lovers engaged through his television and radio broadcasts, and does now through the Concerto Chat video series on his YouTube channel. His recital program this Tuesday opens with Beethoven's Piano Sonata in C sharp minor quasi unifantasia, popularly known as the Moonlight Sonata. Everybody has surely been exposed to brooding interpretations of its opening adagio so stenuto movement. But very often those are glimpsed at an amateur level, and top-notch professionals program the piece less frequently than you might think. In any case, the sonata is much more than just its first movement, and particularly its finale, an unbridled presto agitatro, can convey drama of the most violent sort. From there, Parker moves on to two works that figure on a CD of piano fantasies he released last November through the idealistic music distribution service. CD Baby, the first is by Beethoven's great admirer Franz Schubert. His wanderer fantasy, this is one of Schubert's most virtuosic keyboard works. Its technical demands proved enduringly fascinating even to Franz Liszt. That the premier pianist of the post Schubert generation, Liszt went so far as to transcribe the piece into a version for piano plus orchestra, and it seems that when he came to write his own towering piano sonata in B minor, he did so with Schubert's wanderer fantasy hovering as a former model. To conclude his recital, Parker serves up a fantasy work that will be new to nearly all listeners: William Hurt's Wizard of Oz fantasy. Though he's far from a household name, 
Hertz is a fluent musician who is mostly active as a songwriter and an orchestrator of film scores. One cannot resist quoting and a province assessment of him. Post Don Hertz's website, Bill has to decide whether to become John Williams or Horowitz. Parker writes that Hertz can work pianistic miracles out of harmony, rhythm and texture and explains how the piece came about. Several years ago he showed me a piano duet fantasy that he had composed using several of Harold Darlin's iconic themes from the Wizard of Our soundtrack. It was joyous, technically rockers, and seemingly featured dozens of notes all at once. I jokingly commented that if he could arrange this fantasy for one piano to hand so would happily play it. I thought nothing more about it. Several months later, Pages dance with musical notation began spewing well of Parker's tunes and machine. I recognized the music. It was indeed the fantasy arranged for two hands, but couldn't imagine how it might be played. I called Bill and complained. Hey, didn't you know that when you rearrange a for hand work for two hands, that you're supposed to leave out some of the notes? It's one of the most difficult works I've played, period. Of the four further solo piano recitals that pepper the season, two seem especially promising. On July Samsa, Parker's fellow Canadian Mark and a Hamelin plays another of Schubert's major keyboard achievements, the towering sonata in B-flat major, D. Galbalosa, preceded by a work titled Toward the Center by Yehudi Weiner, also Canadian-born. Though he grew up in the United States and has pursued his long and distinguished career at leading universities in this country, Weiner wrote this fantasy in Yitzin Gobag Basa Bata on the retirement of pianist Ward Daphne from the faculty of the Yale School of Music, where they were colleagues for many years. Then on Og, Sapa, Anne Marie McDermott pays a returned visit, authoring works by two composers with whom she shows a strong affinity. That the pieces she has programmed, Bach's Party to Know, You and Prokofiev's Piano Sonata No, but, are both highlights of her recorded catalogue, by nevating from her combination of technical dazzle, musical clarity, and emotional breath, solo recitals stand a bit outside the central mission of a chamber music festival, to be sure. Nearly all the programs of actual chamber music due to the organization's variably rewarding mix and mat format, in which each piece features different persona and than individual terms in a concert have no particular connection from one to the other. It creates work for the people who rearrange the furniture on stage, but apart from that, the benefits of this over-familiar format are elusive. It is accordingly easier to recommend individual pieces within programs than programs in their entirety this summer. One of the entries that looks especially promising is the piano quintet of Leo Ornstein, which Hamelin and the Johannes String Quartet will perform on Og, Y and Sam, Ornstein, who died in Yitzhin Ling Yu at the age of either 108 or 109, was a brash modernist in his youth, and his piano quintet, from Yaptin Gaobak Yisapta, incorporates quite a bit of the then new musical ways of thinking. It is a large scale work, its three movements span about say up minutes, and it moves with quick silver finesse through passages that may suggest nighttime mystery. La Partung, Romantic Flair, La Rachmaninoff, and Jewish Cantillation, La Blouch, in a good performance, it packs a punch. Another piano quintet that should be worth a detour is Bartongas, which McDermott and the Miami String Quartet will perform on Og. Sub look at the Lensic Performing Art Center. This is an early work in which the composer began to express his distinctive style while still in the embrace of the influence he inherited from Liszt and Brahms. The Miami String Quartet is not noted for finesse in classic works, but it may prove well suited to the emerging Bartong and about McDermott one would have no cause for doubt. Sean Shepard's String Quartet No. Ye, which is one of this year's two festival commissions, will be interested to the Flux Quartet for two outings, on Og, Lock and Tat, following its world premiere the preceding night in Albuquerque, Tyke That, Santa Fe. Now in his mid-sums up 
Shepard tends toward an intricate style that provides a lot of information to process at first hearing, but his music also conveys logic and security that will convince most listeners to stick with it. His achievements have won him exposure at a high level. He spent two years as a composer fellow at the Cleveland Orchestra, and in 1801 he was the first person named as the Kravis Emerging Composer of the New York Philharmonic. The festival saw the commission is a set of seven impromptus for two pianos by Alexander Grode, scheduled for Org, Subta. Two further pieces commissioned by parties other than the festival will receive their first hearings, Goes Variations, Homage to Haydn, commissioned by pianist Kirill Justine, who will play it on Sunday, July Subgaul, and Monday, July Yisab, and a guitar quintet by Mark Nikrog. The festival's artistic director, commissioned by a member of the festival's advisory council and scheduled on org, go and sub. The latter work includes among its interpreters Lukasz Kurapaksuski, a Polish guitarist still in the formative stage of his career. He will appear in programs four days running, including a solo recital. Guitar aficionados will more naturally gravitate toward the recital by the more established David Sterabin, although for some reason his free Indian market concert at St. Francis Auditorium on Og, Yisabyet, does not figure either on the festival's website calendar or on some of the circulars the group is distributing. We are assured that it is taking place, though, the organization's artist in residence this summer is Ellen Gilbert music director of the New York Philharmonic, who fulfilled the same role three seasons ago. On that occasion he appeared as a violist in addition to conducting various pieces. This year he will be on the podium the whole time, conducting Mozart's serenade in B-flat major, K. Sam Butler Subyet, the Grand Part Eater, at the Lensic Horn Org, Yi Sub Yi, and Michelin's Des Canyons Org Swung Oils, from the canyons to the stars. In the same hall the following evening, the Mozart is a supernal work for Zabi Wines plus double bass, a piece most music lovers want to visit often. The Michigan is a monumental entry in the repertoire, Zabi movements, divided among three sections, the whole running beyond an hour and a half. Inspired by a trip in Yatingo Bata Zabi during which the composer and his wife visited some of the most spectacular sights of the American West including the national parks of Bryce Canyon and Zion. These concerts are self recommending and if you don't have tickets reserved yet, you would be unwise to wait much longer. The Mozart serenade sits at the edge of the traditional definition of chamber music, which involves relatively small ensembles with a separate musician on each part, the group almost always playing without a conductor. The mission and requires resources still more fast, its bird song and sublimity is interest to say up say players, and it could not be essayed without a conductor. In any case, it appears to be the only piece in this summer's lineup that truly really supports the idea of festival, even if it sets aside the concept of chamber music to do so. Copyright. C. Yi Tin Ling Yasap in the Santa Fe, New Mexican. Santa Fe, N. M. Visit the Santa Fe, New Mexican. Santa Fe. N. M. at W. 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 Santa Fe, New Mexican come distributed by Tribune Content Agency. L. L. C.